just go to City College. You know, with your work ethic, just go to City College and then to jail and then back to City College and then maybe you'd learn to pull yourself up and not expect everybody to do everything. One of the most enduring aspects of Greta Gerwig's approach to filmmaking is her dialogue. More than any of her other incredible artistic qualities, the penchant she has for crafting intimate portrayals of mother and daughterhood, as well as coming of age, is the direct result of the emphasis she places on how her characters speak. She does this in three major ways. One, her dialogue serves as the driver of her signature pacing, the frenetic energy of forces coming to blows in her films. Two, it's the shorthand she uses to summate character relationships and define character roles for her audiences. And three, most importantly, it reaffirms the significance of language as a central pillar within the medium of film, a medium so often reduced to its visual storytelling components. Of her three critically acclaimed films thus far, it's her rendition of Little Woman that continues to floor me the most five years later. And I think it's no wonder that a movie as explicitly about writing and interrogating women's relationship to autonomy and authorship over their own personal stories is the one that relies on Gerwig's cubist approach to writing and filmmaking the most. The composite effect is a moving picture that understands the vitality of words, as magnanimous as the images that accompany them. I'll take this off and you'll see a perfect ringlet. <laughs> the scenes in Little Woman are frenetic energy personified, high octane pace and speed, and it's the dialogue that sets this rhythm. <laughs> He's a wounded soldier. No, I sprained my ankle. Oh, Meg, you'll kill you yourself for fashion one of these days. Hannah, we need eyes. Oh, come in, come in. Is that all right? Apologies for the chaos. I enjoy baking in the middle of the night and don't mind the clutter, Mr. Lawrence, we don't. Lori, please. The quick, witty delivery of lines, the explosive character performances, the feeling of life hanging in the air, clinging on to every word smartly or stupidly delivered. You're on fire. Thank you. You're on fire! It's here, Gerwig strikes a balance between recognizing the structural nature of screenwriting with the chaotic mess of emotions displayed in her powerful character performances. And this of course reflects the wider movie as a whole, as a vehicle of story that is at once both highly specific, structured, and crafted, as well as a conduit for innate feeling in base level human emotions. It's a dialogue where we witness this underlying construction the most, the wires behind the scenes, the story's foundations laid bare. Gerwig embraces this fact about cinema and her role as a kind of narrative architect, even within her adapted stories. In a movie like Little Woman, it's obvious, employing heavy usage of split dialogue scenes, characters jutting in and talking over one another. Thanks so much. You My know, apologies. you made me at the hotel. <laughs> I couldn't find you anywhere. Well, you I didn't look there. hard enough. Well, maybe I didn't recognize you because you're so beautiful oh, now. Oh, stop it. Not only that, but there's a specificity to her interjections. As we see in her screenplays, she uses these slashes to denote the exact moment a character should butt in with their line. In a Gerwig film, a well-timed delivery becomes just as important as a well-timed cut an editor might make. Speech overlapping creates this cacophony of sound effect that is mesmerizing, like layered tracks in a music piece. But what's important to note is the interjections never curtail the speed and inner rhythm of the piece and the scenes. We're left in more than capable hands as we're transported through her narrative excellence. I'm happy as I am. I love my liberty too well to be in any hurry to give it up. I think more than just adding to her high level pacing, Gerwig's dialogue serves to reveal her characters for who they really are very quickly to audiences. That's the benefit to her stylistic pacing, its efficiency. Take this scene for example. For hours. We've been writing. Oh, I got carried away with our delicious revenge play last night. Poison. No, no poison. It's Christmas. Christmas won't be Christmas without any presents. It's so dreadful being poor. It's not fair. How come some girls get to have lots of pretty things and others have nothing? We have father and mother and well, we haven't got father, and we won't have him for as long as this war. Does. It's astonishing how quickly we can grasp who each of the March sisters are as people in just a few seconds. We know Joe is the self-assured tomboy. Amy, the stuck-up brat. Meg, the comely, worried sister, and Beth, the young darling. Gerwig's dialogue immediately allows us to traverse and synthesize these facts about them, not just who they are, but the dynamics of their interpersonal relationships. 
I think a lot of movies can get caught up in dialogue that over explains, that draw stuff out into the messy web of overly complex, convoluted plots or melodramatic scenes about the nature of this or that. Here we bear witness to bad dialogue's pitfalls, the way artists can too often rely on it to beat their audiences over the head with themes or plot that they were unable to more tactfully deliver through indirect means, through film's strengths. Where Gerwig differs is in the way her dialogue serves to truly support the character performances themselves, unlocking within the actors a kind of emotional lyricism that makes her audiences smarter for having heard it. I intend to make my own way in the world. No, well, no, no one makes their own way. Not really. Least of all a woman. You'll need to marry well. But you are not married, aren't Well, that's because I'm rich. And I made sure to keep hold of my money. Unlike your father. Well, so the only way to be an unmarried woman is to be rich? Yes. But there are a precious few ways for women to make money. That's not true. You With characters summated as quickly as they are in Gerwig pieces, we're left to experience the actual with characters summated as quickly as they are in Gerwig pieces, we're left to experience the actual warring conflict itself. The good part, as I like to call it. The repartee of forces, Joe's scenes battling with and against Frederick, are brutal and tense. The coursing tension of Amy's pining that leads to her eventual romance with Lori and the gut punch effect it has on Joe. The March sisters' various infighting dynamics and their inevitable reconciliations. Dialogue is the main driver that quickly and cogently delivers these summations, both through what is said outwardly. I don't see why I can't love you as you want me to. I don't know why and what goes unsaid. You were right about this. I think we would have killed each other. Yes. Within these scenes, the most classically Gerwig motifs and stylistic choices appear. Smart talking young woman, brooding almost aloof handsome men, the back and forth repartee of love interests. The energy of this melting pot is transformed by the kind of language she gives her characters access to, capable of flirting with the poetic intricacies of Alcott, with a kind of dynamism only two mediums really are capable of fully translating and capturing from novels, theater and film. The ensuing character performances are ones grounded in Gerwig's almost theatrical language. We might recognize other film characters in scenes like this, the dialogue of old, from fast-talking smart mouths to men overcompensating, slow-witted fools or poignant word stressors. When all your characters have access to transformative language, something Gerwig so often imbues her characters with, you're left with an ensemble that feels like a singular beating heart all working in tandem, like a well-crafted piece of machinery. I believe we have some power over who we love. It isn't something that just happens to a person. I think the poets might disagree. But out of all of the great effects Gerwig's dialogue achieves, I think none integrates itself more into Little Woman than its recognition of the importance of writing itself. The film itself explores Joe's relationship with being a writer, having these aspirations while navigating the transactional nature of words themselves, as a woman both within and without the writing industry. This fact is personified in scenes like this. It has to write for reprinting, that sort of thing. Sequels, characters for other stories. Mm, might that be worth something? Well, uh, only if it's a success. I see. It seems like something I would want to own, no? Didn't you say your family needed the money more immediately? Using words to battle for her royalties, the specific nature of contracts, words as a means of access, of ownership, the politicization of words, how an ending is written in both our real life stories and the fictional ones we sell for money. Then there's the written word of vows and promises, of love and marriage and future, words so often scribed into law. They reinforce word's power over the autonomy of women. What Gerwig's words do is create space for these moments of contemplation, of reflection, of emotive explosion, contrasting the chaotic energy of overlapping dialogue, messy words more concerned with keeping rhythm in time than with purpose, with the slow, reflective moments where her characters are rendered naked to their audiences, in scenes like this. I want to be great or nothing, and I will not be some commonplace dauber, and I don't intend to try anymore. Or like well, this. As well as just beauty, and I'm so sick of people saying that, that love is just all a woman is fit for. I'm so sick of it. But I'm, I'm so lonely. I don't think too many people doubt the artistic potential of language in film. 
After all, so many of our modern films have the backing of centuries of great writers to thank for them. In a film about authorship, we're made acutely aware of the power words have over our lives, the lives of women especially, from their messy implications to the concrete truths they reveal. Gerwig's dialogue and all of its chaos and humor and rhythm is one that imbues her films with a kind of stability. The benefit of words that call attention to themselves is that they inherently stress the importance of writing, the physicality of it, the truth that movies aren't born out of thin air, that their ability to wade into the narratively dense and complex speaks to a kind of structural backbone, the wealth of writers both on screen and off who are capable of conjuring the divine, animating the richness of human experience through words which fail to lose their vitality even in the medium as visually stimulating as film is. Visual mediums, of course, raise different kind of questions about artistic capability. How much is a photographer truly in charge of the figures that step into their frame? Is abstract design something to truly celebrate? Does its messiness, its incongruity with depicting the world as it is, imply a kind of lack of effort? If you're a lover of art like me, I think we'll have pretty similar answers to those questions. But at any rate, I'll always champion great dialogue, because its presence readily affirms its significance, the direct choices the author makes through their art. The power to imbue works with a meaning through writing is the closest thing we get to seeing magic in this world at work. And under Gerwig's spell, the gift of Gab never felt more enchanting. We'll be interested in a story of domestic struggles and joys. It doesn't have any real importance, does it? Maybe it doesn't seem important because people don't write about them. Well, no, writing doesn't confer importance. It reflects it. I don't think so. Writing them will make them more important. When did you become so wise? <laughs> I always have been. You were just too busy noticing my faults. Well, which were never there, of course. <laughs> Mind Theater is a solo effort produced and written by me, Ewekin Bade. For only $3 a month, you could support the show on Patreon. It really helps a lot. The link is in the description box below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.